Hi everybody and welcome on board this lovely little sailing boat from the uh, from the Cornish factory and uh, we're going to have a look around the boat in virtual reality so what does that mean to you? Well that means that you can look around where you like, when you like, you don't have to look where I'm looking and we hope it will feel like you're on the boat so you can feel like you've you know the boat and you visited it before you actually come and see it. How cool is that? All you need to do is swipe your screen up, down, left or right or click your screen and drag up, down, left or right and you can look around where you like, when you like. Some people are a little sensitive to the movement of the camera so if I'm going to move the camera I will let you know so you can avert your eyes and then once we're safely back down the camera's back down again I'll let you know and you can return to the tour with me. But let's hope that doesn't happen. So here we are, and don't excuse the old dab because it is quite hot today. Um, here we are, um, we're sitting in this cockpit of this really lovely traditional looking boat. These boats are well known for uh, for the quality of build, for their sailing quality, and they're sought after boats. They're, they're really, really popular, and I know why, because they're really, really pretty. I really like the traditional lines. This particular boat, so as you can see in the cockpit, we've got plenty of room. I'm five foot nine, I've got room to spread my legs here, and uh, I've got uh, a nice seat here. So we've got seats port and starboard, and we've got something to rest our back on here, and we've also got seating on the rails as well if we want to, uh, although we need to be make, make sure we're hanging on and we've got our life jackets on because we don't have guardrails on the boat. Um, the, the combings are nice and high as well, so whilst I'm on a smaller boat and I feel like I'm in the cockpit, I do feel slightly protected, cosseted, that little bit of isolation between me in the water that I don't want to be in, so really, really nicely done. Very nice indeed. Now, looking down at the deck, you can see we've got plenty of room here. It's non-slip. Uh, we've got the bilge pump handle here. We've got a, a self-draining uh, uh, sinkhole down here, or, or scupper, sorry, shouldn't say sinkhole. But yes, we've got a self-draining cockpit here, and uh, all looking very nice and clear. Not a problem at all. The camera itself is sitting on the lazarette. In here, we have quite a deep locker for your uh, anchor, for your fenders, all that kind of stuff. Run thwart chips as lazarettes do. I, I mentioned the build pump handle here and then either side here you've got two binnacles here with the uh with the cover at the front or a fiddle at the front where you can stick your gloves, your binoculars, uh, your handheld GPS, whatever it is you would like to keep safe and secure there. And around the helm we've got uh, plenty of room. So we've got seating everywhere. Uh, the helm handle or the tiller, I should call it, um, is away at the moment. That's down below. You'll probably see it later on in the video. But uh, at the back of this section we've got a nice hole here in the deck through which the Tohatsu 6 horsepower 4 stroke protrudes. And uh, the advantages of that are that you can easily take, get it off, take it away for maintenance if you want. You can take the lid off and have a good old maintain and check if you want to. Downside, of course, is it's going to be a little bit noisier, but uh, as we're on a yacht, hopefully you'll be using that to get out of the harbour and then the engine off sails up or the other way around and uh, all should be good. Very nice indeed. The uh, the main sheet, as you can see, is right across the stern, so you've got the traveller across the stern of the boat, so there's no main sheet getting in the way here, which is lovely, although obviously we do have to be wary that the boom is quite low as we're on a smaller boat, so we're going to be just being careful as we go through those uh, jibes and even the tacks as well, but uh, very nice cockpit. Um, uh, we have got some, some dirt in here, etc., but uh, under it all, I think she's in, she'll polish up quite well. She's feeling nice and clean, just needs a bit of a hose down from whatever's come down with the rain in recent weeks. Very good indeed. And now looking forward, we can see that we have uh, an entrance to uh, the accommodation down below. Uh, we've got a full spray hood. I won't call it a cockpit tent because it doesn't come over the cockpit, although you may be able to extend it if you wish. But uh, once we're inside or even when we're outside, we can roll the back down and we've got a complete enclosed area there. So that would keep the cold and the rain and the wind, etc., out. And if you wanted to stay down there for a weekend or overnight, uh, maybe at anchor or after a hard day training etc. There are two berths down there and uh, it, it'd be a little bit more like camping than boats normally are but so uh, you've got the protection from the, uh, the spray wood here. That does roll down and give you uh, a complete effective canvas wall there. That canvas wall does have a window in it as well so coupled with the windows at the front you've got good light down there. One of the windows does need uh, restitching but I do think and there are areas of the, the, the tent or the spray hood that do need attention but I think that with some minor repairs this could last a few more seasons yet although it is of an age but that would be up to you to decide. Now to get inside uh, we basically climb over this hump and that is a great big locker here, runs of thwart chips uh, and in here we've got the uh, the lifting keel gear and we've got a big big locker so lots of room for all your weekend stuff. You could probably get to a good 
couple of big soft bags in there with all of your uh, your weekend gear, etc., etc. So let's pick you up for the uh, for the first time, and I'll just take you over there. I'll place you on the lid of that locker. There we go, so you can see inside. And I will venture inside, so it's a bit of a crawl over, and we're in. Excuse the view, <laughs> and uh, here we are inside. Now I'm five foot five foot nine. And you can see I'm stooping slightly. With this down, I wouldn't need to stoop, obviously. With this up, I've got the uh, protection. I'm stooping slightly, but when we're in, uh, if we're preparing to go to bed and sleep, once we're in here, then it doesn't matter if you're stooping or not because you'll be lying down, so no worries at all. But it does give that feeling of uh, safety, a feeling of uh, being isolated away from the weather slightly, and also gives you the shelter uh, should the weather be coming in and you want to carry on sailing, or if you just want to get your head down at the end of a hard day. Pretty good. On, uh, on the port side we've got a nice uh, reasonably long berth here, reasonably wide, should be comfy enough for a night or two. Uh, we've got uh, storage underneath, not via, the, not accessed via the top but accessed via a little door on the side here. So we've got port and starboard storage, port and starboard berths here that run all the way forwards there. And uh, underneath the forward cushions here uh, we've got a nice big locker again. You could put your weekend stuff in there. You might want to store food and water, that kind of stuff in there. No worries at all. A shelf port and starboard as well for all your gear. You can see we've got the oars. We've got all sorts of bits and pieces piled up on the right hand side here. Um, could, could do, you can see we could do with a wipe around all the way. The the upholstery in place you could do with a um, being wet wetted and, and soap, soaped and you know give it a good scrub but generally speaking I think you could uh, probably pick this boat up and uh, she's kind of uh, not I, I would never say ready to go because I, I'm not qualified to say that but uh, I would say that there's there's little to do to make her your own I would just give her a good clean through um, check the engine service check the sails check the rigging etc etc but uh, a survey will give you all the information you need but other than that she's a very nice little boat she needs sailing she's not been used properly for a while um, everything that should come with her seems to be here to me. So, uh, yeah, really love her. And, uh, yeah, in a few years, maybe the sort of thing I might be looking at because she is very, very pretty. Anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, do go to our YouTube channel where you'll see dozens more reviews from the smallest little fishing boats and sailing boats like this to the biggest boats, the most expensive boats in Sussex. Take care.